Now I've got to admit, the prospect of taking my boat, my home, onto this river isn't exactly appealing. But it has to be done. In this episode, I finally leave Stourport after four months of lockdown. I didn't find Brindley's joke particularly funny. I faced my fear and hit the river, passing large weirs and through huge locks. We find out how the Seven got its name, chat about river safety, and I'm mystified where I can exit the Seven. Finally, we have a chilled afternoon on the beautiful Droitwich Barge Canal. I'm about to tie up and head down the two staircase locks onto the river and Pam, one of my neighbours during lockdown, has kindly offered to do the locks for me. Stourport Funfair off to the right and then we come to Brindley's joke. It wasn't exactly designed by Brindley and if it had I'm sure it would have been a straight transition from one staircase to the other. And it's fair to say I made a right cock up of it. I'm sure James Brindley would be laughing in his grave. After much manoeuvring, I'm finally in the lock, with the lime kiln dry dock to starboard. I just had a final check of the river to see if any rowers were nearby. And once they had passed, it was all clear to enter the river. The water level indicator is in the green, so with a blast of the horn, it's off onto the river. I can't tell you just how good it is to be on the move again. Absolutely amazing. Even though I'm really quite daunted about being on a river this size for the very first time. Um, yeah, it's kind of quite scary really, but at least the river is fairly benign today, uh, which is nice. Um, and there's not much wind either, so, uh, uh, and I'm booked through Lincoln Lock um, at 10 o'clock which is about 10-15 minutes from now so I should just about make it on time I hope. It seems weird to be leaving Stourport behind after about four months. Um, uh, it's just so nice to be on the move again. I mean don't get me wrong I've got nothing against Stourport. It's a very nice place and the boating community there is second to none. I mean they are such such friendly people. Um, Pam, who was uh, helping me through the locks there, um, yeah, Stephen Pam, um, all the people at the Lime Kiln, Lime Kiln uh, Chandry and Boatyard were brilliant. Um, just so many fantastic neighbours, really uh, kind of kept me sane through uh, throughout lockdown, really. Uh, although I've got to admit, I have kind of struggled a bit in the last month, but um, we're on the move again. So, Let's see what life's like on the river. The River Severn has been used to transport goods for centuries. Flat-bottomed wooden sailboats with retractable masts called Severn Trows operated between Bristol and Cardiff and up to Gloucester, Worcester and Stourport and beyond even as far 
as Welsh Pool in Shrewsbury. Well, my first impressions of being on the river um, is it seems like I'm going incredibly slowly, even though I'm sure I'm probably going quite fast because I'm actually going with the current, I'm heading downstream. Uh, but it just seems so slow, which is really, really weird. Flotation buoys prevent boats from going over Lincoln Weir, and I track off to port to Lincoln Lock. I'm at Lincoln Lock now, I'm just waiting for uh, to get the uh, green light to, uh, to go in. Um, at the moment the gates are still shut, so uh, and the red light, the flashing red light, means that the lock keeper knows that I'm waiting. Several of you have asked where you can buy some of my uh, still photographs from. Well, as a shameless piece of self-promotion, I'm now telling you that I have an online store at uh, a pick fair. So um, if you go to pick fair, Swan's Neck Productions, um, you'll be able to buy some of my prints. I'll leave the details in the description box below. Beautifully, two miles upstream from Stourport, was already a thriving port when the canal arrived because it had a river crossing. It's alleged that the good folk of Bewdley told Brindley that they didn't want his stinking ditch anywhere near the town, that strategically Stourport was probably a much better point to access the River Severn. Also, the river tends to become shallower upstream of Stourport and some 150 bow hauliers, teams of men who would physically pull a trow up the river, were still employed in the early 19th century. How did the River Severn get its name? Now, legend has it that a water nymph named Sabrina fell in and drowned and so they named the river after her. She can't have been much of a mortar nymph if she drowned, could she? And Seven and Sabrina? They don't sound too similar to me. There you go, there's the stuff of legend for you. There are a few differences to cruising on a river than on the canal. Some points of safety to note are that you should really wear a life jacket and probably have a whistle handy. Luckily, I had my old referee's whistle. Your anchor should be easily accessible in case of engine failure and this was one of my main concerns as the engine had largely stood idle for four months. Boats heading downstream have priority over those going upstream and larger vessels will often tend to stick to the deeper waters in the middle of the channel. There are some sound signals that you should really be aware of too. One blast of the horn means that you're turning to starboard. Two blasts means that you're going to port. Three blasts means that you're stopping or reversing. Four blasts, a pause and one blast means that you're turning around to starboard. Four blasts, a pause, another two blasts means you're turning around to port. I've got to say I've been craving getting out of town and getting back into nature again and uh, this really does it. It's brilliant. I've just missed it so much, you know. The Severn is the longest river in Britain, its source being nearly 2,000 feet above sea level in the Cambrian Mountains and during the 17th and 18th century it was the second busiest river in Europe. In the latter part of the 18th and the early 19th century navigation was beginning to be a problem. The river was either short of water or it was in flood. Boats were sometimes stranded in Shropshire for up to three months 
which is why locks were introduced on the river between 1843 and 1845. A huge variety of cargoes have always been transported on the Severn. Coal, salt, timber, china clay, charcoal, ironstone, pottery bricks, cider, port and Spanish wine, tobacco and grains being amongst them. So nice, sun on my face, green everywhere, just so nice. There is a profusion of mistletoe around here. I guess the locals do a lot of kissing. Lucky them, eh? More flotation boys, which means Holt Lock is just around the bend. The lock keeper was expecting me, so the lock is open and I have the green light to enter. The elegant Holt Bridge which was designed by Thomas Telford. Well, the wind's picked up a little bit now. Um, it's coming from the west, so it's hitting me side on, and that's quite lucky, really, because I have to take a wide sweep into the lock landing to get onto the Droitwich um, barge canal. and. Uh, Hopefully, with the, with the wind coming from this side, that should uh, give me some assistance. I can see the lock landing up ahead, but it's not making an awful lot of sense to me at the moment. And I don't know whether it's the one for the river Salwalk, 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 however it's pronounced, or whether it's actually for the canal. Now I'm guessing I have to, I don't know, where the hell am I supposed to go man? It's not clear! Struggling against the current a bit now. Yes, it turns out this was the entrance to the canal and I didn't actually see the river confluence and it seems I tied up on the lock waiting area. The lock landing 
as on the port side. And in we go to the Droitwich Barge Canal. Well, I've moored up for lunch, and I've got to say that was exhilarating, scary, and a whole lot of fun. Um, just brilliant, uh, fantastic. Now, I would actually normally have moored here. Uh, I'm just past Lock Two on the Droitwich Barge Canal, but it is so noisy. There's a very busy road very close by, and. Um, Quite frankly, I've had enough of traffic noise, so I'm going to move on a bit further this afternoon, just to find somewhere a bit quieter, really. Here we go. A Sunday fishing competition. I think this guy was unaware that I was approaching, but he doesn't look too chuffed that I beeped him. <laughs> <laughs> 